Okay, this lesson for those of you that have had to endure assaults by atheism or atheist or agnostic, whatever. Uh, and sometimes you get caught in the crossfire between people who take issue with uh, state established religion and then they throw you in with that, not knowing the history of this country, not knowing a category of people who were identified accused baptizers because we didn't have license to preach or to baptize from any state and certainly not from a state established religion. So this country is quite unique in its origin in that there is no church of the United States, no established church. So when we speak of how would you prove God, well proof for us is fruit and in our Bible, we're told that wisdom is justified by our children, and we're told that a tree is known by its fruit. So what we're going to do is I've built these five categories. These are the quantified steps, target, meet, and qualify. And we'll just move into it very quickly and look at the manuscripts. For example, there's 5,300 Greek manuscripts, 10,000 Latin, 9,300 earlier uh, forms of that all that, whatever that is. There's 24,000 manuscript copies just of the New Testament. I remember the Bible is written, in the authors here, Jewish people. Uh, remember there were 12 tribes of many in the Old Testament. There's one tribe of 12 in the New Testament. And according to a very famous archeologist, let's see if I can find it very quickly here, named Albright. Yes, Albright. He, William Foxwell Albright, foremost archaeologist of the 20th century, he said and observed that the entirety of the New Testament was written by baptized Jews. Now that'll be noteworthy in just a few minutes, but let's stop for a moment and look at calculus was invented by two theologians, Leibniz and Newton, and they did that, um, conjured calculus simultaneously in a book titled, let me make sure I get the title correct. Oh my, these books are nice to tell you. Infinite Powers by Stephen Strogatz. Anyway, we'll see if I can get back and read this. And it says of calculus here, he makes this statement. Without calculus, we wouldn't have cell phones, computers or microwave ovens. We wouldn't have radio or television or ultrasound for expected mothers or GPS for lost travelers. We wouldn't have split the atom and ravel the human genome or put astronauts on the moon. We might not even have the Declaration of Independence, which is interesting. And he went on and uh, quoted a modern physicist, famous one, Feynman. And he was the one that uh, solved the cause or identified the root cause of the explosion of the space shuttle Challenger in 1986. And he asked an investigative reporter, do you know calculus? And the reporter said, no. He said, you had better learn it, said Feynman. It's the language God talks. Which is really interesting because when people say, well, you can't use the Bible to prove it, prove God. So, well, let's just say if the Bible had any veracity and credibility, then what it says would be credible and we could then uh, trust the Bible. And then uh, the fruit of the Bible and the children of it, its authors, so the authors here being Jewish people, and just now I need a sip of water. So, according to research psychology of religion, the Jewish race, and yes, there is such a thing as a race of people, these people, according to this famous Albright, the uh, famous archaeologist, said the New Testament was written by baptized Jews. This race of people, according to uh, psychological research, uh, scientific research, have been shown per 1,000 people to have more people with an IQ of greater than 140 than any other race of people. And you can read that in the Psychology of Religion and Empirical Approach. And you can take this class at University of Arkansas, Little Rock. It's a great, it was a great class. And that book's old enough now that it's probably very inexpensive. You can also go back uh, to Leibniz and Newton, and here's Feynman, but physics was also a product of theology, and so was chemistry. So without chemistry, physics, and calculus, 
So there's all fields of science are theological. Uh, someone said, well, we, quote, we would have invented or discovered calculus eventually. Uh, that would be a truth claim by an atheist who just violated his own principle that a claim is not evidence. So I certainly didn't want to uh, exasperate the person because I enjoy the feedback and the dialogue and I want to help anybody I can to learn and have a dialogue but to just ridicule people. So back to the Bible and what's interesting about it is Newton, for example, he said uh, after many years of diligent Bible study, Newton concluded, now this is one of the people who conjured calculus, okay, conjured it. We have a hard time with students studying it. And I know when I took calculus, I retook calculus one, retook calculus two, retook calculus three, took trigonometry three times, college algebra three times, took statistics, discrete mathematics. I was studying the subject and I was so impressed with it. But now I'd already finished college a few times and had multiple degrees by the time I went to school just to focus on mathematics because it is such an impressive field and it's theology. So as someone, an aspiring theologian, someday I hope to be a theologian. And that's one of the things I want to do is acquire uh, knowledge and to be able to think like that. Now to conjure it, I don't know how they did that. But when he concluded after years of diligent Bible study, we account the scriptures of God to be the most sublime philosophy. He said, I find more sure marks of authenticity in the Bible than in any profane history whatsoever. So, and then Leibniz uh, authored uh, several volumes concerning God, even developed the cosmological argument, which I've, I don't mean, I, I don't mean, more, I won't even go there, but I noticed the types of people who mock that argument aren't quite um, on that level, if you will. It just seems to be something they trivialize to the extent that they really embarrass themselves. But fortunately for them, the audience that they play to and perform for has no knowledge in any, uh, they, they haven't backed away. A lot of us know some of these things, but we haven't backed away and received a total composite of it, for example. Uh, for example, the baptized Jews, for example, there's a record of martyrs. Uh, it's actually called Martyr's Mirror. You can look it up. And these people were persecuted by Catholic and Protestant alike, state established religion, which there is none in this country. We don't have a church in the United States. But they followed this example of these, uh, Jesus who was Jewish, baptized Jews came out. They authored the New Testament. Their book, the New Testament, has more uh, supporting documents than any other ancient text out there. Their book, the Bible, when translated into English, had more to do with the establishment of the Western world than anything else, any other single factor. So you can look this up and read it. I think you can read that online. I don't think it's that expensive, but it certainly was costly. And then, of course, when we come to this country, the 2012 very nice, large, voluminous book by John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning author, Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power, in it, he mentions the wall of separation uh, statement to the Danbury Baptist Association, believing with you that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes no account, none other, for his faith or his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. I contemplate with sovereign reverence the act of the whole American people, which declared that their legislators should make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state. So we built that wall, atheists didn't. We secured the First Amendment, freedom, peaceable assembly. That's what churches do, we peaceably assemble. We are instrumental in the Declaration and the Constitution and its framing. We were the ones who fled state established religious persecution. Uh, we're the ones that were instrumental in the disestablishment of religion in the United States, atheists weren't. Uh, the Baptists worked with Quincy Adams and Thomas Jefferson to assure that religion was disestablished. At one point, they were so established and embedded, they were allied with a political party. And what they were doing was using, the political party was using these clergy, state clergy, to uh, direct their people to support them, recruit their people to support them, and then they would legislate those same people to pay those state clergy salary. 
and we didn't need atheists to tell us that was unjust. And back to uh, these here, Einstein, Teller, and Oppenheimer, Jewish. I use three Hebrew children as a mnemonic for those of you that know the Bible, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These are all Hebrew people. The Hebrew Bible is, the language is numeric, phonetic, and pictographic. So when you hear people ridicule the Bible, they really aren't talking about the Hebrew Bible that is an ancient book. They aren't talking about the ancient text of the Koine Greek. And there is a connection, by the way, with Einstein and the group called Baptist. Those people, that was a category describing people who did not secure a license to preach or to baptize, uh, nor do we do that today either. But it says on page 230, in this essential Einstein, everything you need to know about the world's most acclaimed genius. Remember, he was one of the uh, children of the book. He was produced from it. The fruit of it was calculus, physics, and chemistry. You can write physics and chemistry up here. Again, uh, atheists have no field of science. They have no calculus. Uh, they never invented it, nor would they have invented it. Uh, it says, in the United States, religion and politics have been legally separated since the early 19th century in a letter to the Danbury Baptist Association in 1802. So everywhere I go, whether I'm studying science or history, I run across the, these people who aren't atheists and who are highly literate people who go all the way back to these baptized Jews who, these baptized Jews who authored the New Testament, who are uh, tied to the Jewish Old Testament and I'm reading here, and it says it's no coincidence uh, that Einstein ended up in America by moving to the United States. He was free to practice or not practice, as the case may have been. Judaism, as he saw fit, there's his Jewish tie there. And it says, more important, perhaps he was free to continue his life's work without being uh, having to fear religious persecution. So I'm not real sure what atheists have to do with anything we know in science and any field of it they certainly aren't the reason why we have this youtube channel and internet and uh, speaking of that the book was written over 1500 year period of time by over 40 different authors uh, approximately seven different genres and when people ridicule the book one man tritely said he could take any two pages and find it riddled with contradictions well okay so he just makes my case for example so a book that poorly written has been that instrumental in producing calculus, physics, and chemistry, and all the pharmacology and all the technology known today. So uh, I'll go ahead and just say if that's what he thinks. Sir Robert Anderson noticed um, an equation uh, between dates, March 14th, for example, 14th, 445 BC, which is interesting how these numbers work out, to the day Christ arrived, AD uh, 32, April 6th to be exactly 483 years at 360 day year to be 173,880 days which was the exact number of days between the time the prophecy to rebuild the decree to rebuild Jerusalem was given and the day Christ made his triumphant entry. Also, Dr. John Penn said there was an equation in here if someone bothered to find it, so he gave that assignment to his research assistants. We then went and noticed that at a 12-hour day, at a 12-hour night, and let's say that was at 6,250 years, people talk about the young earth, that is, here at 6,250 years, total at the volume, 12,500. We take that 12,500 years, and there was a ratio in the Bible of one day to a thousand years. Isn't that interesting? And we plugged that in, so if we multiplied that by 360 days, it gave us 4.5 million days. And then we multiplied that by a thousand years. That gave us 4.5 billion years, which is the decayed rate or accrued amount of decay of the earth. When we went this direction, took the 4.5 times a thousand days and converted that to 
how many years would a thousand days be? That's approximately 2.78. 4.5 times that gave us 12.5 billion years. So the Bible, this book as atheists ridicule and trivialize, that was so poorly written and so clumsily composed, has equations in it and numeric values in it. I guess they got the internet out and they called each other when they put all this together. But the improbability of this working out so easily, third grade arithmetic, Psalm 90, Genesis 6, uh, Peter's letter, 2 Peter, uh, all these numbers are in there. Jesus' statement of 12 hours in a day. Exodus talks about man works six days, 12 hour days. The young earth assertion uh, leaving out the ratio certainly causes a, a little confusion. And then ignoring the ratio does as well. But noticing that this book had knowledge thousands of years ago of things that our technology is just now telling us is quite interesting. And uh, that would be quite a, quite a feat to take a book that's such a blunder book that is said by Newton, nothing surpasses it, that's written about by Leibniz, two unsurpassed theologians, no one's ever uh, could question or even uh, call into question. Feynman says the language God speaks, physics is also a product of theology, chemistry. So what, what would we otherwise have so the entire world as we know it has been shaped, formed, and fashioned by the book that people ridicule. We have even equations as late as the last few years where we as research assistants worked this out for Dr. John Penn who noticed the formula was in there. He just let us crunch the numbers for him. So between Sir Robert Anderson discovering the uniformity of numbers in the Bible and Dr. John Penn uh, latest discovery and breakthrough and demonstrating we have the veracity so we have unsurpassed number of manuscripts not counting even all the uh, extant copies of the Old Testament we have the history of the Bible its instrumentality throughout history even its translation into English we have the children of it the three Hebrew children that developed nuclear technology we have the fruit of it the fields of science and the fruit of that being pharmacology and technology. I'll just write that real quick. Oh, I'm running out of time, so I'll just write farm and tech. So, and really not sure what more needs to be said, but it makes it quite, uh, I just don't have any energy when atheists just make flippant comments. There's really no content to their comments. Uh, the Bible does describe people like that as clouds without water, so they're like, make empty assertions and all they do is negate and the negative particle the letter a in front of theism is a negative particle and they are the ones who codepend upon theism and i noticed recently several i found out there who had once been preachers for example so they went from saying i am a theist to saying i am atheist so that's funny if you think about it so have a blessed day and uh, i could just write fill this board numerous times, but you know, when you have enough to stop the mouths of anyone, you don't really have anything else to say. So enjoy your Bible, enjoy having proof, fruit, enjoy that the children of wisdom declare the wisdom right, and that we know a tree by its fruit, so we can evaluate the Bible by the fruit of it, the products of it, uh, the testimony of the children of it. We can look at its history, we can look at its supporting manuscripts, and then we can look at the unique people who wrote it, who even today in research by science, they've noticed that they have a higher IQ per thousand people than any other race of people on the planet. Uh, have a blessed day.